I've, I've learned to value things outside of the sports, outside of, you know, the, the stuff that's not always going to be there, right? The things that are going to be there are the people that love you, the people that care for you, the, the 8,000 followers, 10,000 followers you have on Instagram that are liking your photos. They like your photos because of who, you, who they think you are, right? Who, the, the athlete, the, the guy that catches passes or the guy that wore the helmet, right? And there's so much more that, uh, than just the athlete. Hey everybody, I'm Amari Rose. Thank you for joining me for another episode of my podcast, Divorce From Reality, where the focus is built upon designing, building, and maintaining a life filled with joy, self-awareness, and intent, all while embracing growth. Our guest today was listed by ESPN as a three-star recruit out of high school. He was ranked the ninth best player in the state of Michigan and the 80th best in the nation by Rivals.com. His hard work earned him his childhood dream of a four-year letterman starting wide receiver at the University of Michigan. He appeared in 47 games for the Wolverines, catching 72 passes for 765 yards and three touchdowns to close out his run in Ann Arbor. But before the maize and blue, he dominated, dominated at high school powerhouse Brother Rice, breaking school and state records for 105 receptions off the hands of Alex Malzone and receiving yards tallied at more than 1,700. And he padded that with 20 touchdowns, just in case you were wondering. Ladies and gentlemen, Grant Perry, thank you for being here, man. Yeah, man, thanks for having me. Excited to talk, excited to get into too. it. We got a lot to cover. I know. I appreciate I know. you uh, withstanding about the 5,000 texts that we <laughs> sent back and forth. The big paragraph. No, it's all good, man. You're, you're a good uh, good plotter. You, man, you had your whole system set up. Last thing we were fighting was the wind, man. I know, so yeah. Beating it. Trying to get it all right. Yeah. And you just came out of a meditation right now, so you said you were kind of... Oh, yeah. You know, yeah I'm here that wiping one. tears out of my eyes. I'm, I'm, you know, almost falling asleep a little bit. You're getting me out of my comfort zone. It's good. It's all good. Is it ever reminiscent to be out here on these fields? You have a little bit of flashbacks and oh, yeah. running routes and everything? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, just being on the football field, it brings back so many memories. That's, you know, been my life for, for so long, and... Even when you just still watch football games, you know, I kind of watch them in a different light than other people. You know, I see like the small intricacies and like just understanding what it takes to get there or, you know, just even Little League, you know, the kids that have no idea where it can take them and whatnot. But, you know, football has a special place in my heart. And, you know, being around a field is definitely a uh, it's always a good thing for mm -hmm. me. It's so crazy to me, like seeing a role as a football player. I think that comes with so many stereotypes and people thinking they know you and so many judgments off of it. What do you think is like the biggest misconception of when people hear like, oh, Grant Perry is a D1 football player? Like, what do you think people really have not misconstrued about football players or about athletes in general? Yeah, I mean, football wise, you know, probably that we just like to run into things, you know, just collide heads and, you know, concussions are a big part of it. But no, like we're, we're people, too, inside the helmets, you know, um, you know, we have feelings, we have, you know, emotions. We go through things just like anyone else, you know, no matter what level you play on D1, D2, or you make it to the NFL, everyone's got you know, baggage and everyone's got, you know, a story to, a story to share, um, you know, but it's just, you know, I, uh, and it's it sitting down with you today is going to be a fun and new opportunity for me as well, just to kind of, you know, elaborate a little bit more on my personal life and, you know, just, you know, breaking down the, the barriers of, you know, because my whole life it's been, you know, you caught this bass, you did this, you went to Michigan, you know, and, you know, that's kind of been my identity for most of my life, but, you know, I'm on the new chapter now and, I don't play football anymore. I'm not involved with, you know, as a coach, uh, as a coach anymore. So, you know, kind of just trying to find myself too and, and sitting down with you, I think it's going to be a really good thing. And talking about the new chapters, I mean, we were just talking about running and getting a playlist together. Like, what is it that you do now that's a part of the identity of Grant that people might not know about? Yeah, so, I mean, I'll kind of bring you back. So, like, after after I played in, at Michigan, um, I got into coaching. Coached for two years as a student assistant GA at Michigan. Uh, worked with receivers and, and quarterbacks and, and really enjoyed that. And, and I thought that was going to be, you know, kind of my, my path and that's what the road I was going to take. Um, but, you know, I, I also do value friendships and family and, and being close to home as well. And, you know, football is a very demanding um, field to be in uh, professionally um, as a coach. You know, you don't know if you're going to be at that school in the next year. You don't know if you're going to be in a different state, you know, coaching. So I kind of, you know, took the opportunity um, to, to kind of venture out. And, you know, I had a buddy that was working in Grand Rapids. Um, working in sales so I reached out to him and I was like hey like 
there's an opportunity, let me know. And there was, so I came out here and, um, you know, I'm still on this path of trying to figure out who I am, you know, post football, post coaching. Um, but, you know, small steps each day that, that I take, you know, whether, whether that be, you know, picking up something that I'm, you know, not comfortable with, like jujitsu, um, has been just fantastic. It's, uh, you know, I, I do like contact, you know, I come from football, but, you know, it's, it's being a part of the, you know, a team, uh, be an environment, um, you know, and just trying to better myself each day. And, you know, with jujitsu has come, you know, I'm running more, I'm, I'm trying to eat healthier. Um, I value friendships and, and relationships more. So a lot has come from it and it's, it's a journey, right? You know, I don't have all the answers, um, you know, and hopefully no one does cause it's a process. So, right. you know, I've just been enjoying it and, and I take it day by day. And so still trying to figure out who I am at the end of the day. Yeah. Throughout all of that and throughout your transition and now being in Grand Rapids, do you ever look back now and go, I thought my plan was the NFL is in a tough pill to swallow, or do you find comfort and the joy of it being a different process? Yeah, no, I mean, it's that's a great question. Um, you know, just coming off of the fact that, like, growing up, I'll take it back to childhood, I always had visions of, of going to Michigan. Like, that was the place I wanted to be. Like, I wanted to wear that wing helmet. I mean, I remember, like, it was 04, 05, me and my dad were at the Michigan game versus Penn State, mm. and Michigan won on a last-second touchdown. Uh, Chad Henney to Mario Manningham in the back of the end zone. I remember it like it was yesterday, and I was like seven or eight years old. And we were on the sideline somehow. My dad always knows somebody, you know, and, and we had the opportunity to see all these players. And, I, like, man, like, I was totally afraid of everyone because they were 10 feet tall compared to me. And I remember meeting Lamar Woodley and Prescott Burgess and all these guys that were huge, and I was like – almost crap in my pants as a kid but uh -huh. that was my goal like my goal was to go to Michigan to be in that wing helmet to play in the big house to to play in the the Michigan State game to play in the the the, the game versus Ohio State yeah. um and you know the NFL didn't work out um you know I ended up actually pulling my hamstring on pro day and I had some surgeries in my junior going into my senior year and my body just you know wasn't at a place where I, I felt like it was healthy enough to, to continue on. Um, definitely could have, you know, tried, but it was just a, an uphill battle. And I did swallow that pill pretty early on. It was like, you know what, I'm going to get into coaching and try to, you know, better other people. Um, but I'd say, you know, kind of growing up, having that goal of Michigan, I never, I, I saw myself in the winged helmet. Mm -hmm. I can't say I saw myself in the, in the Detroit Lions uniform, you wow. know? So wow. like, it was more so like, once I got to Michigan, like I had kind of like, in my mind, I had reached the pinnacle. Like, this is what I wanted to do, and, and I did it. And the NFL was kind of an afterthought. And as a player, you're always supposed to, you know, it's it's the NFL next, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you know, some people don't have those aspirations. And I did, you know, I wanted to go. I, I did pro day, but, you know, it just didn't work out that way. And, you know, it was a tough pill to swallow, you know, stopping football, stopping playing. But, um, you know, it, I, I got over it, and I, and I don't beat myself over it. You know, I, I have plenty of friends that are in the NFL, and I love watching them play, and they live a, they live a fun lifestyle. Um, but, you know, when you learn to, you know, be happy with where you're at, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a good place to be. That's lovely. That's, like, so amazing that you can look at it, and that was your goal, and find so much joy in achieving that and not almost getting caught up in everybody else's journey and what people expect from you right. if you're going to the NFL. I love that, that you said – Essentially, that was your goal, and you did it. Like, you should be proud of yourself. Like, when was that first moment? Was it the first game that you put on, or when did you hit? Did you ever have a moment where it hit you, and you were like, man, because I know visiting you guys all the time and being in those locker rooms for me is crazy, but when did it hit you of, like, man, I did it. Like, I'm here. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. Uh, I'm trying to think. Definitely, probably, I mean, when you get that – when I got the offer from Coach Harbaugh, that was like a – wow like this is really like a you know it's happening yeah. um i'd say probably like the first day um we we got on campus i remember it like yesterday like we had uh you know no other players were in the building it was just the freshmen and their parents it was like a big long day of orientation of like this is you know what to expect this is where your food is going to be at yada 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 and then there was like a big long break mm -hmm. i remember uh john o'corn was just down there throwing to like to himself basically he's throwing at like a, a dummy target and i had my high school cleats still like i, I was prepared just to like go do something that day and mm -hmm. He's like, hey, you want to run around a little bit? And, like, I put on my, my orange Brother Rice cleats, and I was running around the practice field with O'Corn, and, and we, uh, you know, that's when me and his friendship started, and, and that just was like, man, like, I'm out here. Like, I'm not going back home with my parents. Like, it's not a visit where you go up for a couple hours and you go back home, and then you go back to high school classes. So I think that right when, you know, they left, and, and I was, you know, with O'Corn throwing and then went to my dorm, that was like, man, 
it's it's here it's time to go yeah. it's 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 in uh it's in full go so yeah for me being with you guys like i felt like i was a part of the team sometimes like when i'm walking into places like i remember we were downstairs somewhere and i think we were walking out and somebody asked jake but to like sign his t-shirt and he just had on like a white t-shirt and i'm like what because i see you guys are just like yeah there's other guys like we're right. playing video games i've known everybody for so long like knowing jared who was really the introduction to everybody like if it wasn't for jared telling me to come up to you of him all the time and treated me too like i was a part of the team like i would have never met all the people i met but that's how i saw you guys but i know at the same time like there's always people that are going to talk like the quote of small minds discuss people average minds discuss events and great minds discuss ideas there's always going to be small minds discussing people and people always have something to say about football players, about U of M guys. Do you look back now? Like, do you ever think you had an ego in those situations of being like, yeah, man, like I'm GP, I'm number 88 or no? Um, that's a great question. So, I mean, like I'd say going in to Michigan, I didn't have necessarily an ego like because I had more of a chip on my shoulder. Like in my recruiting class, I was lowest on the totem pole, right? Like I was, I got literally offered on a signing day, mm -hmm. um, had to decommit from Northwestern. Mm -hmm. um, what did that, what did that feel like to you? Did you feel like I should be number one? Did you feel like you should be up higher or where was your head I at? I mean, so I guess in a sense, I, you could say I did have a little bit of ego because like I was producing these stats on the field that like I was comparing to other people around the country. I'm like, mm -hmm. Like, come on, take a shot on a guy that's local that's doing numbers that are, like, literally, like, some of the best in the country. So, in that sense, I had an ego. But in order to kind of get to that stage, in that sense, you have to have a little bit of that, like, hey, like, I can go and beat anyone right, right. now. Like, one-on-one, -on -one, like, put me out there. Like, right, the I'll go catch the ball. Like, and more so that I'd say a little bit of an ego came on, like, when, you know, you start playing a little bit more. People start, you know, knowing who you are or, like, a, you know, a party. And they're like, oh, come on in. Like, and they're kicking other, you know, guys out. Um, so in that sense, yeah, you gain a little bit of a, a, an ego, but you know, as the years went on, you try to, you try to diffuse that. Cause like, you know, you know, egos aren't good for anything, you right. know, especially, you know, I'd say more so having a chip on your shoulder is better. Um, but you know, I, I had an ego at some point, you know, I think everyone does in, in yeah. some aspect or capacity. Yeah. Um, but you know, just understanding that and then, you know, trying to do, do well with what you have, right. You know, the, you know, with great you know, responsibility comes you know, the, the Spider-Man quote, I just butchered it, but you know, that's kind of what I'm thinking of. Like, you know, I am a Michigan football player. I am on the national stage. Like you have to hold yourself to a higher standard and, you know, just keep a chip on your shoulder. I don't have an ego. So and it, there's a bit of confidence to it that you have to have to be that guy. Exactly. You, you can't walk around all the time going like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to catch this pass. Like, right. you got to really be like knowing that when you line up, like you're about to burn whoever's in front of you. Like that's what comes a part of it. But I think the awareness part is so important for people. And, you know, we're looking at now with all these NIL deals and how everything on social media is such like, it's almost a per personality before you're really the athlete. Like people really are hyping themselves up to be like this grandiose character as opposed to them focus on the grind and commitment. And I know like, me for basketball and even for you for football with Chris Carter and all those guys, like how much you guys were out practicing and mastering your craft. It was really about that. Like I think for me, seeing everybody when we were in high school was like really about being the best person you can be. And it was a lot less like, oh, I want to be a TikTok star or Vine star. So what do you think is a good message or like, if you had like some high school guys you were dealing with not right now and you were a high school coach, like what would you tell those guys of, that confidence has to be earned as opposed to your rankings or different things like that. But what I guess be your message to those guys and all the NIL stuff going on? What do you what do you think about all that? First thing I'll say is a little upset that I missed that period. Like that <laughs> that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, but like you said, it does bring new challenges, right? It brings a new entitlement. Like oh, I have X amount of followers, or I got you know this deal, that deal. You get a um, Drake like on your picture, right? <laughs> like you know you're you're connected with the, the world, and the world's connected with you. So you know you're in this microscope and. You know, it does bring more pressure. It does bring more, um, you know, you got to perform, right? If like you're getting all these deals, they're expecting you to do something with it. So that's good and bad, right? You know, it depends on how you react to the pressure. You know, it either makes diamonds or it busts pipes. Um, but my message would be, you know, worry about that stuff. That stuff's going to come, right? If you put in the work, if you grind, if you are committed to your craft, that's going to come, right? People are going to be naturally, like naturally want to, like, hey, like, please wear this shirt or, you know, please drive this car, right? Like that's going to come. Um, and if it doesn't come, good, right? You have no pressure on you. You just got to go out and perform. Um, so that'd, that'd be my message, right? Just kind of put on blinders, you know, put it on your back, you know, understand that people do want to put their label on you, but 
be who you are keep grinding don't worry about the numbers don't worry about this that because like at the end of the day like especially in the football or basketball like one left turn one bad step yeah. your knee's gone your ankle's gone like something can happen and and you know that stuff's gonna fade away right when you know when you don't have your body to to you know produce and to advertise yourself that's gonna go away so just be who you are stay in your path and it'll come right i i think that's so true that what's up under the hood is really important because ultimately like in that meditation all of these things that we have are at some point fleeting and getting caught up in that and i was reading and it said it's natural to want to present the best version of yourself but important to remember you attract what you use to impress if you present something to the world you get it back if i use money to sustain whatever i have going on in my life and to impress somebody I may want to feel valued for something different at some point. So I just thought like that part of it is so true that if you're using football or using your athletic ability to impress somebody and you decide one day, I don't want, I want somebody to think, oh, I'm a good father. And that's what I want my value to be. If you get too ingrained in that, it's like super difficult. But I guess going further with it, it says it's key to find and exude whatever version of yourself you want somebody to be attracted to rather than the self that you think somebody would be attracted to you can only be your promotable self for so long before you crash and burn or they discover the real you so if you could eliminate any disparities grant and what attracts people to you and what you love about yourself what would you want people to see for who grant perry is Whew. that's a good one um I guess I would want people just to see that, like, you know, I value relationships. I value, you know, really honestly, if you're a good person or not a good person at the end of the day. And like, that's what I want people to see, you know, about me. Like, like I, I, I'm giving examples here, but like you, you said, like, you know, if you have a car, like, and you attract a girl or, or, or a guy or in something like a, a new friendship and they're only attracted to that car, they're not really attracted to you as a person. Right. Um, and I'd say like, I got into a little bit of that in, in college when, you know, when I do get like a blue check or like when I do start you do gain some followers, you're like, well, Hey, like I got a little bit of a status, like, yeah. like, and you kind of show that to somebody or you're like, they're like, Oh, I saw your pro your profile. Like you, you got a lot of followers. Like, right. That's like your social currency though yeah, in college. Right. Like, like and, and that helps you out in some situations, but also it, it's effect affecting your mental psyche. Cause like, right. that's not at the end of the day, like when, like when we started roaming the earth as, you know, cavemen, like that's not <laughs> what, that's not what it started as. Like you started off like, getting to know people right. like are you trustworthy or are you not are you a good guy you're reliable like right. can i count on you like that's kind of like just having good values and, and having good relationships is kind of like what i value and i want people to see it like okay that's what his currency is like that's right. what you know he really like wants to see like right. I, i'm not really into like the the flashy cars like the the big like big high, like you know they, that'll come down the road with success and, right. and and work um you know naturally but like just value, just values, friendships, relationships, and, and, you know, family, like just all those things matter to me. And that's what I want people to see that, that what I care about. Mm -hmm. All right, Grant, I want you to close your eyes for a second for me, if you don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm gonna take you back kind of how we were doing earlier, doing a younger self meditation. So I want to invite everybody at home to go ahead and close your eyes as well and join Grant here. So I want you to go on a dig grant to find some buried treasures and you might find some things that might seem worthless to you and i want you to go back to your younger years go back to when you were around 13 14 and i want you to visit grant at that younger age and take a moment now to kind of see grant at 13 14 think about where you were at who was in your life at that time what really mattered to you at 13 14 And I want you to look at your younger self and give him all the words of wisdom that could help him on the journey now. Give him all the hugs he needs. Embrace your younger self. Tell your younger self what he needed to be here that he was never told. This might be your courageous, your beautiful inside and out. You aren't stupid. I'll still love you regardless. Now think what your younger self would say in response. Have this conversation for a second with your younger self.
Now, as you wrap up the conversation, give your younger self an embrace and tell them thank you for the time. And whenever you're ready at your own pace, go ahead and open your eyes. What do you think younger Grant needed to hear looking back now? Younger Grant, um, definitely just I control what you can control. Um, you know, stuff's going to happen around you that, that it's out of your control, but stay disciplined to what you find is important, whether that's school, um, you know, sports, uh, relationships, um, and, and just be, be humble, be nice. Um, I was a bit of a jokester in, in middle school because at 13 to 14, that's like, I'm envisioning like eighth grade going into high school, seventh grade. Um, a bit of a jokester, you know, the parent-teacher conferences were always the best on mom and dad, but, you know, um, you know, I always remember used to, I used to see, you know, I, you know, some, some of my friends would, instead of playing at recess, they would read. And at the time I'd be like, like, what are you doing? Like, come out here and like play tag with us. Like come play, throw the football. Um, but looking back now, I, I, I appreciate it. Like, like they just they they enjoyed what they did and they were doing it and you know they got on to be smart people really successful and part of me wishes i would have you know joined them for a few recesses and and you know ventured out a little bit you know that's another thing like be comfortable being uncomfortable um you know i look back um you know i've always said that i can like part of me wa like would want to be an actor someday like i think that's just so fascinating but back in the in the in the school periods like the middle school elementary when you're supposed to be preparing for that i didn't like i was like oh i don't want to be in a play yeah. like i'm i'm busy playing football like mm -hmm. like i don't want to act like but that's something that i think you know the main thing i say you know be comfortable with being uncomfortable mm -hmm. um you know that's that's what comes to mind that's so beautiful to to kind of look at yourself from that age. I think for so long, I like didn't do that. And when I first did that, I don't know how it felt for you, but that was like a big thing for me to look at myself from a younger age. And I think so much of stuff is there and it's kind of written in the shadows, but you don't necessarily see it because like you're saying, we're clouded by those things of scholastic book fair, this or that, and you don't understand what's really going on in the world or how to really understand it and look at it. So hopefully that meditation is something that you'll take home and, you know, hit you at different points. But throughout like our younger selves, um, there's always a past, present, and future in every relationship we have, whether it's with a female, whether it's with a family member. Um, and I'm curious on your past, present, and future relationship with football. Who is Grant in the past because of football? Who is Grant in the present because of football? And who is Grant in the future, do you think he'll be because of football? So just walk me through those three different stages. Okay. Yeah, so past, I have to say, I definitely think I, you know, was, you know, uh, just like a, a tunnel visioned, um, I don't want to say try hard, but just tunnel visioned, like football is everything. Football is like the only thing I have, like football is essentially my key to, you know, open other doors. Mm -hmm. Um, and I mean, that's for good and for bad, um, tunnel vision being that I maybe missed out on some other things that you know, football didn't teach me, um, but good. Uh, it definitely opened doors that I couldn't have opened, you know, without it. Um, present, um, it's, uh, you know, it's just a place that I do find comfort in, um, you know, talking about football. If, if there's someone I don't know and, you know, they bring up something about football, like I could talk to that person all day, right? Um, you know, just going back to Michigan and watching those games are always fun. Um, and just, you know, have, being a part of, um, you know, an alumni of Michigan football and, and, and Brother Rice. And, you know, it's, it's kind of, you know, it's who I am and it's, you know, who I will be in the future and, and the future self. Um, I do think one day I want to get back into coaching in some aspect. And, and you know, I think football is a, is a sport that teaches so many valuable lessons. Um, it's, you know, 11 on 11. You know, if one person's not doing the right thing, it's not going to work so it's a it's a it's a chess game on the field but it's also a game of lessons and you know i, I do think one day i want to give back and you know whether it's high school or college i don't know but you know give back and 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 be a um you know a a, a vocal leader and a vocal person for the for the sport of football and then teach more than what football is i think that rings so true for me too it turns you talking about getting back to it and that future self and that sort of being something that you crave for me, I don't know what it is, and maybe you have the answer, but for sports, 
I feel like it's something I cannot shake. Like I still watch basketball game and watch North Carolina games. I don't care what's going on in my life. Me having the vision of being at UNC Chapel Hill and being able to coach or do something around basketball, even if I'm not playing. And I was recently talking to AJ Turner about this, that how there's just that love for it that never dies. Like, what do you think it is that we as athletes find these things and we just can't let it go? Or like you're saying, you see a football game and it just it just yeah. brings out a side of you. Yeah, I mean, and that's something that I've realized. Well, growing up. Um, and it's been it's been kind of nice. I, I have a new uh, a new perspective of of you know kind of football and Michigan football is growing up. I, like Michigan football games are every Saturday I'm watching or I'm at the game. You know, being a fan and and enjoying all everything that comes with that. And then you know, I, for the four years in college, I've been playing, and that's a whole different perspective. It's a whole different role. Like you are the product that's what's on the field, right? You you are producing. You are doing. Um, you know you're out there having a good time and, and, and really grinding hard and, and that's the only thing going on in your life essentially besides school and now being outside of football uh, outside the building again I'm, I'm back to being a fan mm-hmm. um, and it's 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 just like it's part of our DNA right it's yeah. sports it's it's the lessons in life um, the tribulations that we went through during it mm-hmm. um, you know it's getting hit or getting the elbow in the mouth and you know, for going up for a rebound and, and putting in your mouth guard again and just going back down the court or, or picking up your helmet and saying, you know what, I can do this, I can keep going. Um, it's just something, I don't think it'll ever leave us, right? It's just yeah. like, it's it's who we are and it's, it's you know, it's like you take away football from somebody like Jerry Rice, like, I mean, that's that, you can't, right? Like, no, that's just who they are, it's their DNA, it's Michael Jordan, basketball yeah. Jordans, like it's, it's just all a big circle for, you know, if you get into that sport young and that's something that you love to do, yeah. Um, it's just something that like you can't you can't rip it out of you, and if you do, you, you definitely lose something. What's your, like what's your favorite moment? I know for me, man, there's been so many plays where I was like sitting watching you and being like, oh, like look at Grant. Like I remember you catching like that touchdown pass against Hawaii, like yeah. stuff against Penn State. Like what for you is like the biggest? Like do you ever watch like any like replays of old moments and you're like, man, like that was such a crazy moment? Man, um, you know sometimes I like if i'm on just like tv and i'm clicking through the channels like the big 10 network always re-airs games and i play, i've been fortunate to play in some games that have had some like really really big outcomes mm-hmm. um first one i'm thinking of is the uh, the game when jt was short um that comes to mind um you know double overtime like and i had a pretty good game that game i caught some pretty big passes um what's happening in those moments like take us into the mind of like being on the field like what is is everybody stressing is it all is what's going on it's 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 organized chaos um it's you know you got to do your job but you're also like lining up against you know that year with like five dudes on the ohio state defense got drafted like i think in the first or first two rounds so you're going against really really good competition the clock's winding down the coaches are yelling the quarterback's trying to get the play in you know you're trying to focus all right well if they they rotate to a three high defense like you know i got to do this or if they do you know so you're just trying to stay on your toes but also stay calm um and something in that game then i think mostly everyone on our team was in it it was just like when you are truly like immersed in the game you kind of black out Mm -hmm. and it's just kind of like your body does the work your mind's there it's clear Mm -hmm. but like it's just a sense of clarity and like that's why like that loss was so tough like we went back in that locker room and just like i mean not to say we felt like we got cheated like we lost the game like we should have you know not let you know had it lead up to a double overtime mm-hmm. but you know it's just t- those losses are tough but they do teach you a lot you know if you just win all the time you don't learn you know as much so mm-hmm. losses come with lessons and you know it's it's it was just a fantastic time so i was involved in the michigan state punt right the 2015 the trouble with the snap like <laughs> that's another example of like <laughs> crap like i literally remember i'm on the sideline and i'm talking to to freddie canteen he was another receiver there older than me and we hadn't hung out after a game and he's like dude if we win like when we like we're gonna go you know um you know how we're gonna have a good time we're gonna go get some food like we're gonna hang out and that was like in the last two minutes of the game and then 30 seconds happens and we just looked at each other like like uh oh okay uh we're not gonna hang out tonight i guess <laughs> and it's, so it's just like different things that have just been so like i wish it went the other way but it's yeah. life lessons and yeah. it's it's i'm happy to be a part of it is it is it still surreal to you to look back now or have you like cemented into it like do you ever get into a mindset like i look at sometimes of like Let's take the car, for example. I'm so always like, man, that's crazy. Like, you had that car. Do you ever still have moments where you're like, man, like, I was you with him. Like, I played under hardball. Like, yeah, like, and I, I think I kind of like, 
you kind of get desensitized once you're in it, right? Like, so right. like you get the car after two months, it's like, okay, well, it's still got four wheels, four doors, and it's it's driving the same speed as other cars. You know, you could probably step on the gas a little bit harder than other cars, but like, it still does the same thing. When you when I got to Michigan, when you're in the hustle, when you're in the grind, when like you, each week you're looking at a different opponent, you know, you kind of, in a sense, become a little bit desensitized to like how cool of a moment you're in, how like, how many other people would want to be in your shoes and as a kid like that's all i dreamed of um that's all i want i just wanted to be a michigan football player and like you get there and then it becomes almost you know it comes a job mm -hmm. and you know you got to try to like still find ways to have fun with it still find ways to not view it as a job and view it as just like i'm living the dream and like some days you lose that you know some practices would be tough and you be like crap like i gotta i gotta you know buckle it up today and get out there and go um but you know, just trying to, you know, find the, the, the good things and, and the hard days is, is just something that I always would try to do and, and not become desensitized to it. And, and then stepping out of it, like you kind of downplay it a little bit. Like, well, I, I played at Michigan. I say that like with ease, but like that was my dream as a kid. And like, I'm sure other kids want to go you know, to Michigan, Michigan State and have the same experiences. So like some days I, I want to like say I, I downplay it, but like I should look at it like, man, I really like I did that. And that, yeah. that's something that a lot of people want to do. And, and I'm proud of that. Um, but, you know, it's 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 nice having the, the experiences I did. And, and I am very, very thankful for it because of the, the relationships, the time. I mean, it's, it's some of the best times I've had. How real is that state rivalry? Because I know we had a lot of friends that went to yeah, state. So right. in my mind, I was always like I was at state a lot and then I was at Michigan a lot. Yeah. But is it really that real? Like for, for me, the North Carolina Duke thing is real. Like I really like yeah. somebody says they went to Duke. Like, yeah. And like that's kind of the thing, like as a, you know, when you go to Michigan and you go to play football there, your biggest rivals are Michigan State and Ohio State. Mm -hmm. And that game at Ohio State is always at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, we had just a like, I don't know if it was just because they had been smacking us for like the past 14 years. And mm -hmm. finally, we've gotten over that hurdle now. But it was almost a sense of like a little bit more respect. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if towards them, like they, they had been doing really well. They'd been winning Big Ten championships. And it's like, all right, we got to go in there and we got to like take it to them. Like, you know, they garnished our respect. Like we still would go in there and, and essentially hated them too. But yeah. the Michigan State game was different, especially for the in-state kids that, that had friends that, go, that went to school there. Um, like most of my kids, most of my friends from Brother Rice went to Michigan State. Yeah. And it just had a little bit extra, a little bit extra sauce on it. It's just like, man, I want to like get this win. Right. Because you know, like whatever school wins, everyone's going to be in that city that night. So like yeah. either your friends are coming over or they're not. So um, that game was really cool. 2015, not so much. Um, you know, had some <laughs> other good games in there too. But uh, it's it's a special rivalry that that. I'm so happy to be a part of. I mean, I grew up watching those games, and mm -hmm. you know, you get in arguments with your friends. No, Michigan State stinks, or Michigan sucks. Like, right. and you just be arguing <laughs> for no reason as a kid. Like, right. you have no attachment to it whatsoever. Like, your parent mm -hmm. might have said, like, "Hey, like, go blue," and you're like, "All right, well, we're going blue today. Uh, we're going blue forever." But you know, it's just you know, you grow up with those little rivalries in state, and it was it was amazing to be a part of it. Throughout us talking so much about team, team, team. There's so many moments in high school that I had without going to U of M of being around people and after practice, before practice, going to go get food, team meetings. What is that transition like of going from team, team, team and reaching a place of isolation? I know there's two different ways to look at isolation. You can look at it as loneliness, which is the negative aspect of it. If I'm alone, I don't have anybody or solitude, which is finding comfort in that loneliness. What is that transition like? Take me through that of being around people almost all your life. So this, is this the first time you've really been by yourself? Yeah, uh, yeah. so I lived I lived by myself for like a year when I was coaching um, and then COVID happened. And then my girlfriend, we, we lived together for a little bit. Um, and then when I moved to Grand Rapids, it was like the first time I fully like, you know, had my own play, like truly got my own place as, you know, for a, a job. and. It was really working and, and living by myself. But coming from a, a, and that's one of the hardest things, like that is one of the most important things that I cherish about being at Michigan and being at, you know, Brother Rice and being a part of a team is, is that locker room atmosphere, you know, just the, the camaraderie, the brotherhood, like, and, and I played, so I'll give you an example. I played at Michigan. I, I played early on. So I had the opportunity of really like garnishing the the respect from older guys in the locker room um so when they were graduating mm -hmm. it was tough to see them go mm -hmm. and 
um, you know, as the years went on, you, you had to kind of become that guy and become that, that leader. Um, so the, the, the relationships that I had in that locker room spanned from f all four years and I made so many friends and, and to go from that mm -hmm. to, you know, to, you know, to having just like coworkers, yeah. a little bit of a difference and living by myself. And I'd say, you know, some days it feels lonely mm -hmm. for sure. But most of the time now that, you know, I'm on a good regimen, I got things that I got going on, jujitsu, you know, working out more, eating healthy, you know, doing these things that, you know, keep my mind busy, keep my mind active. It's more solitude. Um, and, you know, I'm looking forward to it. My girlfriend's moving into Grand Rapids in a month. Um, that'll be nice. We're getting the house. And uh, congratulations. That's so exciting. Thank you. I know. I'm excited. I'm excited. I think we're going to get a dog too here oh, soon. What kind of dog are you going to get? We're looking at a, a Bernese mountain yeah. dog. She she has more leverage on what dog you pick me to do? No, it's it's so like it's it's a mutual thing. Okay. Um, it's a mutual thing. We're definitely going to have more than one dog eventually. Um, she's never had a dog growing up. So like this is extra special to her. Uh -huh. Um, so and she's gonna be taking the bar when she gets up here so i'm gonna be essentially the main trainer yeah. so i'm getting my my training shoes on i'm getting ready to go ten dogs like we used to have dude, back to the train yeah <laughs> dude I'm, re I'm about to buy a couple of books off amazon learn how to feed them and, and train them and all that but um and i think living on your own and and being on your own does give you a little bit of uh it helps you find yourself a little bit right because mm -hmm. it's just you and your mind yeah. and some days that's that's tough and scary and like you don't feel like doing anything and no one no one's there to say well go do something right. like get up and there's days and, and weeks for i'd go and not work out and, mm -hmm. and you know i told myself you know my body was so beat up after michigan that like there'd be days where i'm, I'm like you know when i get out of you know out of michigan and i'm done playing and whenever my playing days are done I'm, I'm gonna take a while off and that while off you know kind of rolled rolled into a few months and like i'd work out here and there but mm -hmm. could never get a good regimen right um so that's why i think it's important to try to find that team atmosphere and i think i found it with uh jujitsu and and you know it's just a really good atmosphere there and and I definitely feel like i'm living in solitude now so that's mm -hmm. for sure what are you been able to take away from football to jujitsu of now we kind of talked about it a little bit before, but what made you pick jujitsu, and where do you feel like you kind of fit into that role now? That being your your life, it's funny. I'll, I'll give you the, I'll give you the story on how I got recommend that how I asked for a recommendation on where to go. Okay. So, me and my buddy Drake Harris, we went to the Big Ten Championship game this past year when uh, Michigan played Iowa, and we were sitting behind this guy that had cauliflower ear. And like you see those guys, you like okay, I'm not you know I'll mess with those guys. Like those are like basically fighting badges. Um, but I tapped him on the shoulder and I was like, Hey, like you, you fight, like, what do you do? And long story short, he's from Brazil. He runs his own gym in Novi Jiu Jitsu. Um, and, uh, you know, I didn't think anything of it at the time and I had no intentions of doing Jiu Jitsu then. Then fast forward a few months later, you know, a few months later, and I was like, you know, I really need to get into something. I need to be, you know, work on progress. I need to get healthy again and, and really just like kind of switch my mindset. And I reached out to him and I was like, Hey, like, if you know any good gyms on this side of the state, like recommend or, you know, recommend me a couple and I'll go check them out. And, uh, he connected me with, uh, I work out at unity Jiu Jitsu. Um, and, uh, it's, a uh, it's been fantastic. The similarities between that and football is just, it, it's a, it's honestly, it's a beautiful art. Football is a beautiful art as well, but Jiu Jitsu, it's, it's, uh, it's a, it's a mainly a defensive tactic art where you mainly are trying to get your opponent to the ground and then it's a submission um type game so you can get choked out some days and but it's not a choke out where you're getting mad at the guy like you get choked out you tap and then you guys reset and it's uh it's been the hardest workout i've done since michigan which is something that i thought i would never find like if i go running on the street after a mile i might just start walking like all right like enough is enough like or i go to the gym i go you know, hit some bench press and then you know kind of just walk around for five minutes and go do some legs or whatever you know like you don't have that instruction that you had at michigan whereas in uh at unity uh you know you, you kind of going hard because like if you don't go hard you're gonna get tapped out yeah. and you want to do better you want to see progress um and i love the belt system the you know the, the i'm a white belt as fresh as it gets um but you know i look at these blue belts look at these purple belts and you get a guy, I go against a guy named Ray, he's 130 pounds and I can't get him off me. Um, and he's just so strong and it's, it's, it's fascinating and there's so much to learn. And um, I think it's, uh, it's opened a door that, that I'm gonna, you know, pursue for a while. In Jiu Jitsu and through going through all of this, how important do you think it is for people out there that are playing football and for younger high school guys to have that backup happiness like would you say like jujitsu is a form of expressing yourself and your happiness line on how important that is as opposed to you just sitting at home watching netflix every day like how important do you think it is to find something like that 
and not have it all in all your chips in one bag you know yeah no i think that's a that's a really good point it's i think it's it's vital um you know for these guys that that do go play college and even high school too like when you're done with that you you lose something you know you lose a sense of the the locker room the sense of like you know, working towards something that some guys can turn in, into their work life and, and immediately like the, the flip a switch and they're good. And some guys can't, right? Some guys are like, man, like I'm missing something. I need something to, to get me going to give me a little bit of juice. Um, and I think jujitsu has done that and more. It's, it's, it's a, it's a game where like, I, I'm so fresh, I'm so young. And that's kind of what I like. I like going into something just so raw and like, um, you know, just kind of being a at the bottom of the baseline, bottom of the totem pole, and, and just like having that chip on my shoulder and, and trying to like prove myself each day. And, um, you know, I'll get a compliment here and there. And that just like changes my whole day. Like, hey, man, like, you know, I can tell like you and then this is the thing I've gotten mostly. They're like, well, did you wrestle before? And I'm like, no, I, I played football. Mm -hmm. And when they found out I played football at Michigan, they're like, oh, like, I see like, you, like that's why you're going so hard. That's why like you're so strong. I'm like, well, I mean, yeah, but, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm here to learn too. Like, I want to keep doing what, what you guys are doing, but, um, no, I just, it's, it's really good. And, and, uh, I enjoy it a lot and it's vital though. You got to have something, right. And it may not be jujitsu for everyone, like definitely not for everyone, but you know, whether that's, you know, finding a new hobby, finding a new passion, finding a new grind, a new craft, right. Like so starting a business, you know, <laughs> just something that, that you can go and, and put your time into and, and it makes you happy and changes your day drastically i love that so much and i think like hearing you say that joy and like talking about that like the other thing i know of seeing you light up in that same way is talking about your girlfriend and for me i think well i think it was saint patrick's day last time i saw her and we were standing there and she told me about one of her professors went to shrine and it's such like a perfect thing for me because she genuinely gives me that same amount of joy that you do and us talking about things and I've seen her way more suddenly than I've seen you, but she was just such like that same how I told you, like that open embrace that you give me every time. The last time I saw it, saw you when we sent that picture to Chris, it's just like, I think that's so lovely that you guys have that. So what do you feel like is the biggest point of having somebody there? Like what does the relationship do for you or what has love kind of taught you uh, throughout now our mature years of being out of college? Yeah, no, and I've definitely like, and, and me and Andrea, we have grown over the years. Like I met her, I was either a, I think I was a junior or a senior in high school mm -hmm. and we started dating in my senior year um and that's another similarity we, have. we both had Mary and girlfriend yeah 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 <laughs> and uh you know we started dating the senior year and then we get to college and we kind of realized you know it's a it's a busy fast lifestyle you know so we did take time apart um and I think that's how we definitely knew that once we did come back around we started dating again my senior year our senior year mm -hmm. and um you know, we were like, you know what, it, if, you know, we still had this connection, you know, after four years of not dating and, you know, we stayed in touch, I'd see her around and say hi to her. And it, it really came to me one day after my surgery, mm -hmm. I was telling you this earlier, mm -hmm. it's, uh, you know, I, I had groin surgery, hernia surgery, my junior going into senior year. Mm -hmm. And I, I just was like lonely. I was at the house by myself, like everyone was going to practice. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to say that they were, for some reason my roommates weren't at the house mm -hmm. and I was just kind of by myself and I didn't have really anyone to reach out to mm -hmm. so I reached out to her and I was like hey like do you want to come over mm -hmm. and I think she thought it was like more of like a like a you know kind of like a, a wine and dine type of mm -hmm. invite but it like literally I'm crippled for the you know, my waist down mm -hmm. still wanted her to come over and, and we hung out and we just talked like until like 5 a.m yeah. and like those relationships are the best aren't they yeah it's just you like shouldn't talk like you're like we're in high school yeah, again and it's really just my best friend and Damn. um so I think that was the spark that kind of brought us back together, like going into senior year. And then it was also tough because we, you know, we were hanging out that summer going into what she was going into um, law school and like, well, where are you going to go? Like, it's going to be tough. We're going to do another long distance or if we're going to do long distance. And she was just like, well, hey, just if, you know, why fight it? If it's there, like, let's do it. Yeah. And I think that's what I needed to hear. And, and we, you know, fast forward three years later and we're about to move into a place together and i mean she's really my rock she's like my best friend and you know she, i count on her she counts on me and we're there for each other so um i think once you do find that person in your life it's it's something special and it's um you know um you got to cherish that and, and treat that well and treat it like a plant and just water it and grow it and and just love it that's so beautiful and i think it takes a lot as a young man to understand that in order to love somebody, there's that space of growing apart. 
But if it's meant to be, you can grow apart and ultimately grow back together. Yeah. And I think a lot of people get attached to things, right? You used to always say that, um, I think even myself of growing up and having relationships, I would look at everybody as a rock in the pond. And I would think that these people were solidified and they were meant to be there. And as I got older, I started to understand that sometimes, <clears throat> as I got older, I started to understand that sometimes some people are lily pads. And it doesn't mean that the relationship is any less significant, but I truly believe that sometimes people are put in your life, maybe it'll be for two weeks, two months for you to teach you a lesson to have an experience together. But I think we get so attached. And you know, if somebody's given us solitude, if somebody's given us comfort to get so immersed in them, and we ultimately feel that time to, to separate, and then we, we can't do that. And I think it, you end up saying to yourself, you know, like, all right, I'm gonna do, an, uh, I can't do a year without them. And you end up doing two more years with them and it does so much more damage to you. So I think it's so much, it, it does so much to take that time away when something's really meant to be. And I think there's certain beauty in letting somebody have their own free life and they choose to come back to you, you know, as opposed yeah. to forcing that and forcing somebody to be around. And how much, how much of it do you think is like, did you ever see yourself now with like, would you have guessed like you're about to be moving in with somebody or how much do you, have you grown from high school to like loving and cherishing a relationship? Right. I've always been a relationship guy. Have you always been a relationship guy too? Yeah. I mean, honestly, I've been in like one, like she, like one man, one big relationship and it's her, um, throughout college, I just kind of focused on football and, you know, there'd be nights where I'd go out and, you know, say hi to girls and, you know, hang out with girls on the weekends and whatnot. And, you know, the apple orchard stuff and whatnot all that cool stuff but like a true relationship that like that i've just cherished is her and like yeah. i don't know if that's to say like i didn't venture out enough i didn't like lend out my heart enough but when you know you know right, right? and like it's just she's someone that we've just always been so compatible she's got an awesome family like her um she's got two brothers that went to michigan her other brother went to iowa um yeah, I, written in the stars, huh? Yeah, written in the stars, and like I go and hang out with their family, and I hang out with her brothers more than I hang out with her. Like, yeah. So like it's just it's, that's the best. You go chill with somebody's yeah. family, like oh you go do whatever. I'm I'm good. Yeah, you know? playing video games, playing all the, all types of stuff. But, yeah. But no, it's um, and the old saying goes, if you love her, let her go. Like right. um, so I think like you said, if you know when it comes back around and it's natural and yeah. it's not forced, and like you guys both want to be in a situation where you grow together, yeah. I think it's really healthy and really good. Yeah, I know that letting go part of it, of everything. I don't know about for you guys with the relationship, but how tough was that? Because for me, letting go of somebody for so long was so tough. Because I, I think for a certain while, I started to feel like, wow, like am I not good enough? Do they not want me? Like why would somebody choose not to be here? And it almost like, I felt like for so long in college, if somebody left, it was like taking a part of me away. And now I have a buddy and we were talking about it. And I'm like, when somebody leaves or somebody needs a break, instead of you focusing on trying to get them back, the best thing you can do is to sit there and really build yourself up, especially as a young man. Like now you take time to go, okay, I'm going to read more. Okay, I'm going to focus in more. Now you come back to them as a better person. And unless you're a superhuman, growing and doing that in real time when things aren't as great, isn't optimal so how how tough for you was it to let go and yeah no i think you hit it right on the nose i think like you have to like build yourself up you have to become the best version of you in order to like give your love out right um um so we broke up like freshman year like we dated a little bit into freshman year um it was somewhat mutual um I, I just was so, and I don't want to seem like i'm like being selfish or whatnot but like i, I was just very busy and like mm -hmm. I wasn't able to like give my hundred percent to hundred percent of myself to her. Right. So like we kind of just like came to a, a, an agreement, um, and just were like, hey, you know what? Let's let's just you know let's let's go and let's let's grow our own trees. Let's adventure our own our own styles here. And you know, it did, did sorry to cut you off there, but do you think like how we were talking about having that area of spirituality to ourselves, like? Is that what kept you rooted in that comfort? Like, do you think having that spirituality and being like, all right, if it's meant to be, she's gonna come back, allowed you that space to be comfortable with it? Or what do you think allowed you that space? I know some people can get so disrupted by relationships. Like some people might leave the football team, you know what I mean? If a, if a relationship doesn't go as planned, but what yeah. did you, where were you grounded in? You know, I think I was just, yeah, just more so just like, like you said, just like it, if it's meant to be, it'll be. And like, we me and her we would see each other on campus at, at different parties and whatnot and like 
it was never a hard conversation. It was always just like, hey, how you been? Like, she'd make me laugh, I'd make her laugh. And it was just like, a, it was like having like a, a best friend almost. And, um, you know, it just, it was evident that there was more there and like, there's definitely a future there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we were just living both fast lifestyles. She was in a, a sorority. I was in a, you know, a fraternity with being in football. <laughs> so, you know, we both were, were on our own paths. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I think just, you know, her having such a good heart Mm -hmm. and you know me you know needing somebody that like it was just like she's just she's she's my girl you know she's perfect to me and um you know what she provides and like that the she's always trying to motivate me like hey like did you get up and go run today like this prior to jujitsu like now i'm on my own like i'm grinding now but like she always is trying to help me feel better help me do better help Mm -hmm. me you know and that's what you need that a lot of times that's what i'm saying you need need somebody like that and and my mom was always like, man, I hope you treated her right. Like, I hope you, you know, you, you were, you, know, you weren't disrespectful. And yeah. yeah, moms are always right. And, yeah. like, and she was saying that back at like my freshman year of college. Mm-hmm. So now that we're together again and our families are all hanging out, it's, it's, it's good. Yeah. It's really good. I think for me, the relationships like that always have a little bit of extra spark of kind of situation we were talking about with our dad. I think for me, finding that love and finding that comfort in somebody always hits home even more. So tell me, I guess, and walk me through what it's been like for you as a childhood and now processing everything with your dad. And I'll kind of share like my experience uh, with my biological dad after. Yeah. So, yeah, no, um, growing up, my dad, um, he passed away of pancreatic cancer when I was five. Mm -hmm. Um, And sadly, um, I'm still putting the pieces together on like, you know, like I asked my grandpa and my mom, you know, more so now that I've matured and like, I recently just went down to a wedding in Houston on my, it was my, one of my cousins on my, on my dad's side. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I kind of had like a little bit of emotional breakdown where like, I didn't like, I'm like, I don't, I don't know much about my, my biological dad. Like mm-hmm. I want to put these pieces together and, and figure out more. Um, because the, the few memories I did have of my dad were, were pretty traumatic uh, memories. I mean, I, two memories that come to mind were one being carried out of the hospital mm-hmm. crying like I couldn't stay there mm-hmm. um and then the other one was I remember I was at my grandma's house and me and her laid down to go to sleep and I woke up in the middle of the night she wasn't there mm-hmm. and um I walked out to the living room and everyone was just consoling my mom and mm-hmm. she was like yeah like dad just passed away and those are literally like the two main memories I have and some sometimes I'll, I'll see something I'll see like with something like I have a couple hats of his and some posters or picture frames and whatnot that'll, that'll bring back some memories but like I think growing up and maturing I was like man those are two shitty memories I have like I want to have something deeper I want to know like what kind of person he was you know so I'm, I'm you know still figuring out how to go about that and because I've kind of been a a kid that that to deal with his feelings, it kind of compresses everything. Yeah. Um, and didn't love to talk as a kid. Yeah. Wouldn't talk it out. Wouldn't, you know, my mom asked like, are you okay? Like yeah. ask me anything you want to know. Like yeah. I'll tell you anything. And I just kind of be like, oh, I'm good. Good to go, go outside and play. Right. Um, and that, that's catching up with me now. Like I'm, I'm realizing like, I got to figure out a way to deal with this. Um, and, you know, just kind of opening up my mind, opening up my heart and just asking questions, I think is, is the first step. And, um, you know, my mom did, was fortunate enough to meet and remarry um, my dad, who I, I don't even call him my stepdad now, yeah. my dad now. Um, and I wouldn't be here if it weren't for him. Yeah. Um, I mean, he, I was playing soccer up until then. I hadn't even played football until I, I met him. And he got me into football and he set me on this vision. He took me to my first Michigan games, had me on the sideline, like, uh, and just, I mean, just just so special and so thankful that he came into my life and, yeah. and is just that rock that, you know, a lot of people sometimes don't have that, that, that father figure or mother figure in their life that, you know, it kind of does affect how their life trajectory goes. And my mom, she was working her tail off to, you know, make sure everything was good and, and it, for me and make sure I was in sports to, you know, keep me in, you know, in the right space. And she would send me to this, this camp in the summer called Sandcastles. Mm. And it was a summer camp that, you know, you'd go and you'd play, it'd be like a summer camp. You'd go and you'd dive in the lake, swing on the swings and live. You'd be sleeping in cabins for a couple of weeks. And, but at the end of the, the day, you'd sit around and it'd be mostly with kids with, like, you know, with the, they lost a father that lost somebody in their life that you know, you'd sit down and talk. And I just never talked, man. I just yeah. did like, I wasn't a talker. And, uh, but now I'm, you know, I'm, I'm definitely seeing that like, you know, 
you know, talking to a therapist is, is something that's healthy and it's not like it shouldn't be shunned uh, right. shunned and you know like just learning how to you know cope with stuff and yeah. you know that, that definitely affected me growing up but you know now i'm realizing that and you know just so thankful for my dad now that it stepped in and and you know has made me the man i am and and thankful for you know my biological father that you know helped me, put me on the earth and yeah. whatnot and in the family that i do have um on his side so yeah it, it was it was tough you know growing up because it does bring up some insecurities like i did take my i took my dad my stepfather but my dad's um last name when i was in seventh grade mm -hmm. and I mean, could you imagine being a kid in middle school and then your name changes? Yeah. And I it, keep in well, mind, it's funny, mine did. Oh, did it yeah. really? Was it being per you know? And yeah. like, if you don't because want to dad too. If you don't want to talk about yeah, the, the situation, wow. like I didn't want to tell people that my dad had died. Right. And I told my few of my friends, but like it wasn't something that I was like trying to be open about. Like I was just like, yeah, like I changed my name. Like mm -hmm. get over it. Yeah. And like. <laughs> that's just that's that's how you are as a kid though. yeah like oh, in the yeah. but like in like as a kid that's like right. like the, like you're getting cornered everyone's asking right. you you're like like how and then once you do? open up that's a floodgate though of emotions i don't think a lot of people understand that to other people are just like oh why did you change your name what's up you're, you're right and exactly and i think that's why like my coping mechanism was to avoid it yeah so i think that's yeah the, tell me tell me about your experience man there's so many similarities there we're like same thing i was around my biological dad until i was about 13 and we had kind of a custody situation where i would go on weekends i think i just hit a point where i was just like i don't want to do this but it it brought so many insecurities out of me at the time of being like why doesn't the person that like put put me on the earth love me the same way my mom does and i always wanted that and i think of seeing kids at catholic school and things like that i always saw those perfect families and i was like man i don't have that perfect family but my mom remarried to, uh, or not remarried, she married my stepdad, mom and my dad, uh, biological dad weren't married, but she married my stepdad. And he was the one that was there when I was born. So same thing, I don't call him my stepdad, but I think that like younger part of me kind of was, like I remember a couple of moments of me being a little uh, hard ass and saying like, oh, you're not my real dad, yeah. you know, stuff like that. But it's almost like a resistance to reality of where I look back now and I was so troubled by being like, oh, he's not around. Like this isn't the way that I want it to be. And I think once I found comfort in being like, okay, this is my situation and being able to like understand the things that my stepdad and my dad uh, taught me and be him being able to take me through different things. It was like, I think still having that male figure there is still so important. And you know, same thing for me if my name for so long was Rose and then my mom's name became uh, Walker. And so I changed mine to Rose Hyphen Walker. And people were like, wait, so your middle name is Rose, your last name is Walker? And everybody's asking me. And I'm like, I don't want to talk about it. Like, I don't want to like explain to somebody that like, oh, the person I call dad isn't my actual dad. And people are asking questions, well, what happened to your dad? Where's your dad at? I'm like, look, don't worry about it, all right? So it's that same thing for me. And I think, I don't know, it's just funny how many similarities that we have there of it being the same thing and kind of experiencing those same things. But I don't know, man, it's just so, tough that i think like same thing with my mom i think my mom and my grandma so many times i went to a therapist too uh being able to talk to people but having that woman there and having those relationships that's personally where i open up at like i think there's still like me and my mom have like a great relationship and i love her to death we talk about so much but i think there's still like hints of things that i like tell here and there but i think me opening up still is just a huge emotional floodgate and also things that i've learned not to compress but how to manage and compartmentalize in my mind of understanding like, okay, this is how it went. And I know in terms of death, like my grandma's death two years ago hit me of kind of that same thing. Like in my room right now, I have like three of her uh, golf hats that she used to wear. And like all my paintings in my room were like all stuff that was in her house. And it's such a tough thing to deal with death. I don't care how old you are. And I always like my biggest fear of right now through going through every day is my mom leaving. And I'm always like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm always telling my friends, like if that happens, like you might have to check me into a hospital somewhere because I don't know what I would ever do. And that always scares me. I think like my joy comes in now, like knowing like they're looking over me and watching over me. So I guess maybe in some different ways, like hopefully that finds you comfort of knowing your dad is still always there and how proud he is of you and the young man that you're evolving into and how much you've grown and not use that as an excuse not to grow i think it's really easy to do that like for me like all of this is a byproduct of my grandma passed like i wasn't reading or doing anything like that before she passed like, i'm not reading a book man like <laughs> but to be how she was like right so i started reading because i needed something to console me and i never forget 
I was in Grand Rapids. My um, my mom called me, and I just know. Like just, how you were just saying, you went out there and saw your mom, and I think there's certain times where you know what it is, and there's nothing that needs to be said. And she had told me like, yeah, she passed away, and I just broke down. I was just like, what? Like, because that's so hard to conceptualize, and still it's so hard to conceptualize for me. Like that somebody isn't here. Yeah. You can hug somebody, kiss somebody, all these things. They can just be gone, and. I remember just breaking down crying and she came over and we're just like holding me. I think I cr cried on my kitchen floor for like five hours. Like I didn't move and I was just like, but I, I know there's levels to grief and getting through it. And I think it'll never get easier. And that's why I think that just the relationship you're talking about having with your girlfriend, it's so important to be able to talk about it and be open. But I want to thank you for, for sharing that yeah. being vulnerable to talk thank about you. that. Cause I know, I know. It's, I haven't it's, met too many people that have like literally had this, like change in the name. <laughs> I know, like, right? That's, I, that's, that's good to know. I mean, and like, there's so many other people out there that, that are going through that same yeah. situation, you know, that have lost somebody or insecure yeah. about talking about. They don't talk about it. Yeah. And I, it took me 26 years to realize that like, hey, it's okay. And like, I credit my mom. I credit like anyone that's helped me along the way, Andrea, like, yeah. you know, it's okay to talk to people it's okay to open up Man, and go to a therapist and yeah. seek help and like and if you don't like your therapist go to a different yeah. therapist like don't yeah, just bounce around like i haven't gone yet but like it's on my to-do list like yeah. it, just to like i want to be asked questions that i haven't thought of right yeah. i want to like think about stuff that affects me and, yeah. and see how i can deal with it differently yeah. and um you know jujitsu right now is kind of my therapy yeah. so like you know if, if i can't do that then like i don't know what i would be doing so like yeah. i definitely eventually I'm going to get here to a therapist and, and definitely just, you know, just talk to them and just see what they have to offer. Cause yeah. you know, my mom's been talking about it forever. I went yeah. to these camps growing up, but you know, it's, it's just, it's good to, it's good to open up. It's yeah. good to talk about it. It's hard to, to compress everything. And yeah. you know, it's not good for you. Like it's not good to sit around and have everything bottled up. But I do think like in certain areas for me where I know I'm like, yeah, you know, there are probably parts of me of like, why I leave a relationship or something of like feeling abandoned for a certain age and not having a dad there and like why it's so easy for me to pop up and leave and I know those are things that like oh it's really now if like like you said taking me 26 years to get to it that I'm able to see now and be like oh, okay that's that's why I do that and understand that but if you're not aware and conscious of those things I think you ultimately keep falling back into the same cycle and now you're doing the same stuff and I know um of you being with her for so long it's not the same but I think people can fall into those traps of oh, you know, I'm not opening up and I'm not giving this girl enough of me. And then you don't understand that, oh, it's, well, it's because I'm suppressing the side of me because I've been suppressing those emotions of dealing with this passing. Exactly. And so you fall into that same cycle. So I do think those things are so helpful. Um, I know it's so funny about like the stepdad thing too. If like, I don't call my stepdad my dad. Like I think most people that are probably watching this for the first time. This is like the first time hearing it. Like nobody really knows that because it's just, yeah. you know, how I live my life. Do you have like a nickname for him or anything? No, I used to... Um, it's funny, my grandma, her nickname was Oba. I think it means like grandma in like Japanese or something like yeah. that. But his name is Kerry, and we, I just call him dad all the time. But I just call him like K-Walk or something like that because the last name Walker, yeah. and so I just call him like K-Walk. That's thing, yeah. Like stuff like that. What about you, you have a nickname for your dad? I, yeah, I, I call him Pops. Pops, okay. Yeah. I know for me, having Instagram and all those things and having followers, it's always a thing where people think they know you. You know, you see them all, oh, I know Grant, I know. Oh, what's up, man? I know y'all followed you for a while. And for me, I always felt like, one, you being a follower on social media doesn't mean we have a personal relationship and you know me, but I think people can think that from the stories and following your life. And it might be somebody who had a class with you, somebody who might have coached you on the sideline, and they go, I know Grant. Grant Grant's my, my best friend. I know Grant really well. If somebody hasn't seen you in a couple of years and hasn't seen you since you played football, what do you look at now as your growth to say, you know, we, we may be friends or uh, colleagues, but you don't genuinely know me. How have you grown since those days of being a Michigan football player or since Rice? Somebody's thinking they know you. Yeah, no, I think, you know, I did my identity, like, since Rice and since being in Ann Arbor is, you know, primarily just being, like, an athlete. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, there's so much more to just being an athlete. You know, there's being you know, what kind of person you are. Um, to others what, what are you doing when people aren't watching you know what you know what goals do you have what what what, what do you value um so all those things i, I kind of you know it, of course if anyone came up to me and said hey i know you i'd ask oh hey where like how, how, how you doing like i'd never be mean to anybody but there's definitely a sense of like and l unless you're in my tight knit like yeah. you know like and honestly like 
sometimes it's just you and yourself, like mm -hmm. you and yourself, right? You and your mind, like you know yourself the best. And, um, you know, it's just kind of like you, you stay on your own path and you kind of keep grinding. And, and, you know, I just, when you ask that question, like, well, do, do you know me? I mean, like, I mean, I have new values. And if you don't have new values since high school, um, you know, that's probably not the best thing, but you know, um, you know, I, I just, I've, I've learned to value things outside of the sports, outside of, you know, the, the stuff that's not always going to be there, right? The things that are going to be there are the people that love you, the people that care for you, the, the 8,000 followers, 10,000 followers you have on Instagram that are liking your photos. They like your photos because of who, you, who they think you are, right? Who the, the athlete, the, the guy that catches passes or the guy that wore the helmet, right? And there's so much more the, 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 than just the athlete, you know, it's the, the, the person that what are you doing for your community right and I want to get started doing some more stuff for my community I mean I remember one day I just felt like growing up my grandma so my grandma on my mom's side she is an angel mm -hmm. um, and she um, worked in the church her whole life and like it was really easy for when you had to do this the community service in high school at the Catholic school yeah because I would go to her and she'd have so much stuff for me to do mm -hmm. um, but I kind of lost a sense of that you know of just giving back and being selfless and like you know there's the days where like i just kind of like i'm like you know what like what can i do to give back and i'll just go and you know grand rapids has a little bit of a, a homeless problem right That's downtown right. there's you know there's a few homeless people down there and some days i'll just go and i'll pick up a few uh you know turkeys at the at the grocery store what are those things called the uh oh yeah the rotisserie, rotisserie chickens yeah. <laughs> yeah. and like you know i'll just drop them off you know not not even sense to just to make me feel better but yeah. like just to try to improve someone's day yeah. and you know that's kind of what I want to be valued, valued on and looked on and like, yeah, you know me from like social media, but like I'm a person with a good heart too. And, you know, I, I care for others and, you know, I want to, I want to do well in the community and I'm all about bringing people up. And I think that's why, like, I, I, I'm going to get back into coaching one day. It's just, I want to see people do better. I want to see people grow. And, um, you know, that's just kind of, that's kind of who I am. I'm, I'm, you know, I like to, I like to give and I don't like to receive a lot. So, yeah. Those are, those are great values. I think it's, once again, it's so funny, the same thing of, I literally was talking to a coworker the other day, we went out, did a shoot, and we were driving back and I was telling her how much I think the one aspect of my life that I need to fine tune and get, get in there in the mix is community involvement and philanthropy work. I think that's one thing that I'm missing. So if I hear about an opportunity, I'll let you know about it because that yeah. be something fun for Please us. Please let me know. Yeah. And go that's, do something together. Just like you, you said, know? like I, I can always improve on something and yeah. community engagement and giving back yeah. is something that I can definitely get better on. My grandma would be, uh, she's always giving back any way yeah. she can. I want to I wanna try to embody what she does. It's the best lesson you've ever been taught because of football? Um, you don't have it. You don't have it. Just when you think you have it, you don't. Like, and it was taught with Coach Jed Fish. He's the he's the Arizona's head coach. Um, little example: we'd be in the meeting rooms, and. Um, you know, he'd ask a question, you'd say, oh, I got it, I got it. And he's like, do you have it? And it was kind of just relating like, hey, like you don't have it, right? You shouldn't be eating like the steak and lobster, like keep eating that, the, the, the chicken and rice, like keep, just stay humble. You don't have it. Like, and just, I kind of, that stuck with me and um, kind of through the years. What do you think is the worst advice you've ever heard? Or some, some quotes you've back here, you're like, that made no sense. What were they talking about? Worst advice. Um, Probably honestly, the reason I went. So, I, I, I don't know if it was advice or like guidance. Mm -hmm. uh, third or probably fourth or fifth grade mm -hmm. football, mm -hmm. the coaches. It was a new set of coaches for the Berkeley Steelers mm -hmm. um, little league, yeah. and they just had us doing tackling drills for like an hour. And my dad, being a, coming from a football background, was like, "All right, we like they're they're gonna run you into the dirt. Like yeah. this is not how things are supposed to be ran." brought me to shrine and that's when i started playing at shrine yeah. so i'd say that that bad experience bad advice on just tackling all time all the time led me to a good opportunity and and met you met the wanglers yeah. met everyone so go nice people don't know that we also went yeah. to the same middle school too yeah. <laughs> like we just been constantly winding up yeah. all over the world all right so when people want to find you and continue to hear about grand period tell them where they can find you at where can they reach out to you um instagram twitter um what's what's the handles uh Ooh, good question. I think my used to be what the Zohan. Yeah, that that was like my Snapchat. That that's okay. so dust now. I I find Snapchat so like irrelevant these yeah. days. Like, 
um anyways uh instagram grant perry gp i think okay. and then twitter i think is uh the grant perry okay so yeah, yeah so reach out let's talk yeah and hopefully anybody out there that's found anything from today whether it's relationships football life skills opening up hopefully you find somebody that you can share with and offer them a little bit of insight into helping somebody and allow them to branch out and once again the whole focus of the podcast is every one of us wants to design build and maintain a life filled with joy self-awareness and intent and keep embracing growth it's so important to grow you know so appreciate it man thank Thank you you, thank you so much man it was a pleasure yeah awesome time man